time no see. Ah, seriously. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Virtual cheers. Oh, virtual cheers. Me, clink. Are you drinking out of your same glass too? I am. Wait, which one do you have? Do you have the three sheeps to the wind? Which one did I send you? I think it says sheep face, but it's the same color as the drink, so I can't read it yet. Yeah, this one's this one's the same color as the ice cube, so you can kind of see it. Yeah. Kind of see it. So, anyway. I think this is sheep face. We'll know when I drink more of it. Yeah, there you go. Quick, drink, drink, drink. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey everybody, a long time no see. Um, welcome to Knit One Sip Two. I'm Joan. I don't know where to look on this. I know. I'm Jeanette. <laughs> and what? Oh, I'm a uh, you bear. No, no, that's not me. On you knits, you knits on Ravelry and Knit One Sip Two on Instagram. I'm Nettie Keese on Ravelry and Instagram. And this is a mostly knitting podcast and some sipping goes on too. And this is episode number 17. What is it? 17, I think. Really? I think so. Oh, wow. That's what my okay. children say. Okay. <laughs> wow. I don't even have notes. I'm winging it. That's okay. You can wing it. I, I've had nothing else to do but to make show notes because I have not been working like you. I've been working at staying sane. You have been working with dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working with keeping the dead animals going. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, so yeah, I'm still working um, during this crisis, although working mostly from home and only going into the museum when I have to for financial stuff. And we're trying to keep the entire staff working, even though we're close and bringing in no, virtually no income. So, but I won't, I won't dwell on that. It's been a little bit stressful, but that's okay. There's lots of people that are going through a lot worse. So. Uh, you know what? Everybody is, and it's, we just kind of have to pick each other up. I, yep. I went in and I saw my, my boss, Heather, today, because um, Macy's birthday is um, Tuesday. Um, and so I went into the dance store and we kept our social distance and she was nice enough to put a bunch of stuff together for her. And we were talking and she said, you know, there are just times where everybody being positive and look on the bright side. I just don't want to be positive. <laughs> and I said, I get it. I said, it's okay to every once in a while, dig a hole, crawl into the hole, wallow around in the hole, get yourself as muddy as you want to be. Uh, but eventually you have to crawl out of the hole and get rid of the dirt and be positive again. So, you know, it's a cyclical thing. I think we're all kind of trying to find our own cycles. So, yeah. yeah. But, and in our area, we're on like week four of shelter in place. I think we're four weeks into it. Um, yeah, it was um, March 16th because it was the day before Warren's birthday. Yeah. So... Well, actually, that was the first day that the kids were home from school. So, actually, maybe, no, I think it was March 16th. Yeah, well, the state of California was slightly behind our county. So, our county started slightly earlier. Like, I remember um, we closed the museum the last day was the 13th. So, yeah, right around that weekend was, like, yeah. when it Yeah, went. so, I think we were the first in the nation to start like putting the closed sign up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, and it's funny because I remember talking with someone about someone in the city where I work about the COVID crisis on March 9th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, what's the city doing? Is the library staying open? What's the, like, yeah, of course. He said to me, of course, you know, this is, was a city official, of course, you know, yeah. we're staying open and like, he kind of thought I was crazy, but anyway, yeah. but enough of that, everybody has their own, you know, um, we'll be, we'll be out of it eventually. And so far, like, I don't, I don't actually know anyone who's had it and knock on wood, lots of blessings. My son in New York is healthy. And so like lots of things to be grateful for. So. Yeah, my Warren just got off the phone with my mother-in-law. She's got a low-grade fever, and she's in a retirement oh. home. So we're like, I mean, the good news what is she, she's in assisted living in Pennsylvania. So the good news is, is that she's in assisted living, and they're going to take amazing care of her. And, you know, 
that's great. Um, my sister-in-law is not far from where she is. Um, but the bad news is, is she's got a low grade fever and she's 91 years old. God uh, bless her. She is the most yeah. mobile together 91 year old you have ever met. <laughs> so I have no fear. She's probably healthier than me. Um, I mean, I do have a little fear, but I'm just trying to, you know, stay on the positive side. So, you know, but, um, yeah, so I, what I'm sorry. Oh, what am I drinking? I'm drinking a Bloody Mary because it's four o'clock right now. So I figured I'd start with something, you know. <laughs> it's four o'clock on the West Coast, but we're empathizing with all of our viewers on the East Coast. So there you go. What are you drinking? I am drinking some kind of cocktail with vodka, lemon juice. I have tons of lemons on the trees right now. So oh, lemon I'm juice coming to your the house. garden. And then last summer I had tons of apricots and I canned apricots mm -hmm. so it's got a little bit of the syrup from the apricot the canned apricot so a little bit of that like light apricot syrup nice lemon juice vodka and a splash of pellegrino how's that for a mixture it was very good who came up with that was that Gary is he the mixologist no well Whoa. it was I was eating the apricots like last week and I said oh this would make a great cocktail so then I started googling and came up with this kind of nice. variation and so it's good it's light it's kind of dangerous though it's one of those that you can just it's so yeah. light spritzy and not yeah. overly sweet you know just right. a lot of lemon so it's yummy and I'm out of my sheep glass so yeah what are you wearing? I don't recognize that. Oh, you know what? I don't think I've ever worn it on the podcast. It's it's not new. It's um, the lighting in here is making it look really dark, but it's not that dark. It's there. That's better. Nice. Um, it's Hohi Locatelli pattern puntia. Oh. Yeah. What? Didn't you just finish that? I finished it like a year ago, but what I did was I showed it on the podcast before, but I never wore it on the podcast it used to have like ribbing around the neck and it used to have a different um bottom and i completely changed it i took it apart after the fact and you know i didn't think i liked it very well at first but now i've been now that i'm home i've been wearing it around the house it's super comfy it's like kind of this sweatshirt type you mm -hmm. know and it's super comfy it's made out of a madeline tosh sock in this snake colorway so it's very dark green and oh, it's looking like blue on the screen huh. yeah it's not it's green it's a tealy green but mm -hmm. i don't know the lighting's funky and then um is yeah this so, you wore stitches you wore to one of the stitches without having finished the sleeves or something no no that was a different oh. sweater that was bb oh blue okay. Sweater. okay so yeah this isn't new but i've been wearing it a ton I, I now, like at first I didn't, when I first finished it, I didn't like it and I didn't wear it for months, but now I like it. So, Good. Well, yeah. so how about you? All we need to do is we need to put things away until we like them. I, <laughs> Yay. I am wearing my sugar plum. I am so, so happy with it. So happy. Um, so my first color work um knit out of western sky knits merino 17. look i can spin around and show you the the, the neck shaping the short rows um and it's it's not too long but you know for me it's just long enough so yeah it's kind of a little on the longer side but you know for me like i said it's perfect the sleeves i think came out great night not too long but it's beautiful you know so yeah i'm really happy with it like incredibly happy so love the way the colors turned out um it blocked out really well um the blocking was interesting because i was trying to like get the the definition in the points i don't know if i did a good job like i was putting the little t-pins in it and everything so if you have any pointers on blocking color work but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It looks great. Really fun. So I think I had, I was going to look it up and I forgot to, I think I bought 
five skeins of the, this is Iron Kissed, this is Leaf, this is Wisp, and this is Deanth, or Dianth. I want to say about five skeins of this, and I only used four. I can't remember. I have to look on my Ravelry. So I have one whole skein left over. This was all I had left out of the last skein. So it was like perfect. Um, so I don't know. I've got a skein of the dark gray, and then I've got, of course, all the leftovers from the color work. So I kind of, I know the 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 common thing or the normal thing to say, normal, whatever you want to call it, would be to make a hat, but we don't wear hats here. <laughs> Not much. So I don't know. I got to figure out what I want to do with it. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. I think it's, you know, it was fun. Yeah. Um, the neck is a little on the bigger side, but that's okay. Um, and it's so soft. I mean, you know how sensitive I am with wool, but I can wear this no problem, no itchies. So that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> hey, congratulations thank you thank you so awesome. what else you got going on um i finished my shawl um let's see it's not gonna show up very well i think in this lighting but this is the jody shawl this is no this is slow curves it's by hohi locatelli mm -hmm. um oh it looks nice see. it's enormous I don't know if you can see because I'm covering up my face, so I can't see yeah, what I'm showing. Really you. long. Mine came yeah, up really very long. long, like a little bit too long, but it's very pretty. I um, do. I've already worn it a couple of times, and I used a size five needle, even though it calls for a six. So I feel like it would have even been longer because mm -hmm. I know I'm a little bit of a tight knitter. But um, this is a. Uh, this one is Sweet Sparrow Knits Pajama Day. Mm -hmm. This one, which is what, the reason why I made this in the first place is because I, ha I won this yarn. So this is um, Farmer's Daughter. I think it's called, I don't know, it's in my Ravelry page. It's like First Cut or something like that. One Stab, maybe it's One Stab. Um, then I've had this in my stash forever. This is an so, so we, going back, I had this in my little cubby where I keep my yarn and it was next to this one. And I was like, oh, those, those are pretty, like pretty close up. So this is a yak base. It's um, by Yarn Inc. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a one of a kind on a yak base. And then this is the old Plucky. Do you remember the first year that Plucky came to Stitches? Yes, I remember. Yeah, I bought this then, and it's in the wingtip colorway. It's Plucky Bellow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it goes all together really nicely. I don't have a ton in my wardrobe to wear it with, but I have worn it a couple of times, and I just, um, it's super long for me. It's, so, it's not my favorite shape, I think, but what I did when I wore it was I just, you know, kind of did well, I'm not doing a good job of it, but, you know, and then tied it. That's what I've been doing with mine. Mine's, and you know me, I like mine on the longer side, but I, same exact thing. And my tips have even started kind of curling. These too. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is kind of pretty, you yeah. know, it, yeah. I mean, like mine are really probably, cause I, I probably cast off too tight or something, but mine like really, 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 really curl. Oh, um, and this is a Pico bind off. You, you oh. did this pattern, didn't you? I did do that pattern. I just don't remember doing the Pico or not. I almost didn't. I almost did like an I cord bind off. Eh, it's fine. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's why mine is doing it. I don't think I did do the Pico bind off. So I, it, um, it looks good. I like the colors. I don't know if I'd knit it again, but, and I made tons of mistakes. Like it's like, I would just zone out and make mistakes, but like, oh, well, I just left them. Yeah. Well, for shawls and socks. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I don't even have sweaters with mistakes. Hey. Yeah. That's okay. That's what makes it what you need. Yeah. You know. So anyway, um, I don't have I mean I'm working on my modern wrapper, but I cannot bring myself to show anybody that because it's the same. It's I mean the the it's gonna be a really long sweater, so it's gonna take me a really long time. I've gotten um almost finished on the second front side, so now I have to seam it and then block it 
to decide how long the sleeves are. You decide on the sleeve length after you seam and block the body. So I gotta do that. Once I seam it and block it, then I'll show everybody because right now it's just a jumble of yarn and all that. So anyway, so I don't have any other whips. How about you? Uh, well, I finished my Christmas socks. I only had one more to do. No, actually, what am I saying? I do have one other whip. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so these were my Christmas socks. I, I've worn them around the house. So I'm wearing these short socks around the house. Oh, cute! Yeah, so these were, I started, I, I started one on, I don't know, Christmas Eve or the day after, and then I um, finished it, and then it just sat as a hoe. So oh, my gosh. Here. Are those, so are those color West work or is that? No, no, it's just uh, the yarn. It's Western Sky Knits. It's, I think it's called Fairy Lights and it was their last season Christmas colorway. And then this green is um, chocolate lime, West, not Western Sky Knits. Did I say Western Sky Knits? West Yorkshire Spinners out of Britain. God. So, yeah, I tried a new technique on the toe that I learned from Rocks Rocks, and that worked pretty. That worked pretty well. Good. So that was good. So wait, so is the green stripe in the yarn? Yeah. Oh, and you matched the toe. It looks yeah. like you the toe nearly perfectly. Yeah, it is. It's pretty much exactly the wow. same. Wow. And then what yeah. heel did you do? Did you just keep doing? What what? What heel did you do? Um, I did like a a traditional oh, it heel flap and gusset. Cute. Yeah, I use the jelly rolls, not jelly rolls, Rose City Rollers pattern. Okay. Um, and so knitted them from the cuff down. I okay. wear these around the house all the time. Really cute, Jeanette. Yeah, they're, they're cozy. So more shorty socks. Uh -huh. um, so that's good. I finished my other socks that I started when we were at Stitches, those stripey socks, and I had bought the yarn at Stitches, which is why I took them for my Stitches project. Um, I bought the yarn the first year I was buying sock yarn at Stitches, which was, I think, 2017, um, and it's mustache. I think it's a round-the-world colorway. It's like a 14-stripe repeat, but I, I sent them to my daughter, so I already got rid of them, but um, maybe our editor can insert a, a picture, but they're also on Ravelry. I finished those and I use the vanilla as the new black, which is like my kind of go-to for stripy socks. Mm -hmm. So finish those. So yeah, that's all I have for finish. What do you have for whip? Oh, I have a few. Do you want me to keep talking or you want to talk? I only have one other thing, so you keep going. Um, well, let's see. For shorty socks, because I'm in a shorty sock mode because I'm at, uh, around the house more than normal. Oh, this is falling apart. Okay, maybe I'll just do this. So I have a new pair of shorty socks. This is just one of them, but I have another matching. This is the um, Lolo's favorite that I just had in my stash because I've knitted from the ball already for something else, but it's a cashmere, merino cashmere nylon blend from Lolo Did It. And then this is a hedgehog colorway um, hula hoop. Oh, that's hysterical. I know, I won't be able to miss these in the drawer. Heck no. But, um, and I, instead of doing that rolled, I did a little ribbing instead. I dare you so, to wear these to the next board meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just keep, you know, I got those. Um, oh, and a sweater. I started a sweater. Um, this is uh, the No Frill sweater by Petite Knit. Um, and I bought the yarn. Well, some of the yarn was in my stash. Here's the... I'm about to, to split for the sleeves. The, um, sleeves. So it's all bunched up on the needle, so it's not much to look at, really. Oh, this is the one you bought the purple for, right? Yeah, I bought the yarn. So I've had this yarn in my stash for ever and a day, like for 10 years. So I bought this yarn to go with it at Stitches, and it's um, Neighborhood Fiber Company Rustic Fingering in the Sidonia colorway, I think. And this sweater is super plain. Um, let's see where the, where the, every, I think 
petite knit a ton of people have knitted already it's kind of it's just a top-down raglan pretty plain lots of room around the shoulder so that'll be interesting kind of a different shape mm -hmm. so yeah hopefully i'll split for this um the sleeves pretty soon i knit the ribbing for the neck on i think a size three and then these are size sixes so yeah oh it's, wow you went from yeah. a three to a six yeah, and she even had you do like a two, I think, which seems super weird to me. I'm alternating skeins for the for it, so using the helical method. So that's super simple. Yeah, so that's that. Nothing, nothing too exciting on that project. I mean, like, it's it's exciting to make a sweater, but it's not. It's super simple. There's nothing. I did a German twisted cast on for the cast on. The pattern is interesting because it it's not written like a lot of American writers patterns mm -hmm. in it. like for the raglan it's like instead of you know how it'll tell you um insert or place marker you know do this increase this is not like that at all it just says make a raglan stitch you're like a raglan stitch okay what's a raglan stitch and so there's no like place marker, remove marker, like all of that is up to you. Your increases, it's, so it's very, it's different. Like I wouldn't suggest it for a first time sweater knitter who isn't used to such skimpy directions because they'll be going like, what? What's a raglan stitch? See, and I would you know, get frustrated with that. Yeah, it, it's not, it's very sparse, which mm -hmm. I, she also made the pattern petite knit for that Sunday tee that I knit. And I, I think the instructions for that were a little clearer. This is maybe an older pattern of hers. And so you have to just kind of, like it says, um, I don't know, like it says, it says make a double stitch for the, um, for the short rows make a double stitch well that's a german short row but like but th there's no like if you need to know how to make german short rows go somewhere else You're basically. On your own. right yeah so huh. i think it could be confusing for a beginning knitter um, yeah i mean and i'm the kind of knitter where i like to have everything like spelled out really easily so that mm -hmm. because i i rely on my knitting to be relaxing mm -hmm. and if I want to challenge I'll do like color work or something like that I don't want to have to guess yeah I don't want to have to like puzzle through it puzzle through it and and if I do that's why I've learned to have more than one project going at a time mm -hmm. so that it's like oh yeah puzzling so we're gonna put this aside for during the day when I have nothing else to do and I'm not drinking <laughs> can think about it i need straight stock in it <laughs> you know so i mean and that's what's interesting is this is simple it's just a top-down raglan it couldn't be simpler right but it's just the directions are just written in a maybe different style i think we're used to place a marker remove the marker and there's right. not step that step and hand holding almost yeah and then i think uh, on the other end of the spectrum, Andrea Mowry patterns, I mean, she's an amazing designer, but I don't need 14 pages for a top-down raglan. Like, I find her patterns the opposite. Like, too, it's really? too much for me. Yeah, and that's just me. Everybody's different. Like, some people probably like it, but she'll give you, like, row by row. Like, that hoarfrost shawl that I knit was row by row when it could have just been do this in this section and this in this section. So I guess it's all, you know, kind yeah, of what yeah. your, how your brain works and what you're used to. And sure, sure. And, you know, in her defense, like she's, she's doing that pattern for a variety of levels of knitter. So well, they have her, works. and I remember when we went to Stitches Midwest, there was a, one woman that we went into the store and she was doing the throwback. And she said, oh my gosh, she makes it so easy because she walks you through it step by step. So I can see where, you know, somebody who may be a beginning knitter who then, you know, wants to tackle color work or something like that. And, and I, I mean, I remember 
you know, starting out and reading like, okay, row number 25, you're going to do this and row number 26. So yeah, I, to your point, I think that she's probably, you know, walking those through that need to be walked through, which is me every once in a while. So speaking of, that's a nice transition to me talking about my whip. Um, if you're done. Yeah, I have another whip that I can talk oh. about after you're done. Okay. So I started dun, da, 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 um, a pattern out of, I'm going to show the book. And it's so funny for, because I never know what to call this, but it's knit and sew uniform. And so it sounds funny. I'm doing the uniform sweater, which, ever, you know, having a husband in the Navy, <laughs> it's like, you're doing a sweater for a uniform? But um, this is a great book that's got a bunch of different cardigan patterns. And I, I have been looking at this book for over a year now. This is actually the sweater that I'm doing. Um, and finally got my hands on it a couple months ago. And the great thing about this book is, is the pattern is pretty standard. Hold it closer. You can just, how's that? That's better. Um, you can select the different shapes of hem, of neck, of uh, blah, 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 button band shaping. Like this one has got kind of a thick button band detail here that gets thinner. And then it's got the hem shaping where the back of the hem is longer than the front versus this one doesn't really have any button band shaping and um it's got three quarter length sleeves it, it's just you can do all different like here's more of a crop so it's and then the the band shaping here is uh ribbing um so i just i mean i fell in love with her patterns um so i finally started my first pattern. And then the other cool thing is, is the other half of the book is sewing. So, um, and a lot of, and it comes with a pattern. Here's another tunic. A lot of them are tunics. So not that I will be sewing any of them. That's Jeanette's line. <laughs> not me. Um, but so I started knitting it let me see. I can't remember. It's Western Sky Knits. Oh, what's the name of this? Tweed DK. Oh, and this book. So, sorry. You can't find any of these patterns on Ravelry. Um, as far as individual patterns, you have to buy the book. So you can, you can find the pattern on Ravelry as far as people that have knit it but you can't just buy one bit. You have to buy the whole book. Um, then when you buy the book, you get the download. So I've been using both and I'll explain why in a second. So here's the back. Oh, I love that yarn. Oh, I'm upside down. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with the way the yarn is turning out. It's really fun. So, and the really great thing about this Western Sky Knits yarn, I've got to say, I didn't start alternating until someplace down there. There's like no pooling. You know, I, I just, I mean, I, I think it's awesome. So anyway, um, and then the colorway is called Winter Wheat. So yeah, so I'm really happy with it. So the thing about the way this pattern was written, um, the decreases are kind of, um, it, you have to, I had to read through the pattern a couple of different times before I really understood what they wanted. And then I figured out that basically what was happening was, is, and they even say, read the next part before you go on, read it all the way through, which is really good for people like me because I don't always read my patterns. Um, so um, 
what it is 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 you are increasing here at different rates than you're increasing here for the sleeve and in the back. So what I did, I wrote out the row that I was on and when I had to do what? And this does not really tell you, that's my own little shorthand. And then as I completed each row, I checked it off. And I found that that was much easier because sometimes I was increasing this part, sometimes I was increasing that part, and sometimes I was doing both together. I still managed to mess it up a little bit where I had to frog up back a little bit, but it wasn't as big of a mess as I could have made had I not done that. So that was really cool. The other thing that I want to say is, is that on Ravelry, there is an errata note where it says that, that's errata, not erotic, um, <laughs> where it says that um, in the print of the book, there's a mistake as far as um, the row count or something. I figured, oh, okay, they probably fixed it in the digital version. Not only did they not fix it in the digital version, they, they deleted that whole sentence, which then kind of leaves you hanging as far as when you're supposed to do the next step. So I kind of had a compare and contrast because it was like, this doesn't make any sense. And well, all right, let me read it in the book. Maybe if I read it in print, it'll seem different or something. And once I read that one line that was missing out of the digital version, which is weird because again, it's digital. You would think it would be way easier for them to update. But once I re read it in the print version with the mistake of the numbers fixed, it all made sense. So anyway, that all being said, um, they are probably in the middle as far as directions. They're not taking you line by line, but they're not leaving you hanging out to dry. They're kind of explaining it all and understanding that the directions in and of itself might be a little bit of a challenge. Like you have to read it a couple different times. So, but that being said, I love it. I'm already planning my next sweater that I'm going to knit out of this because it's like, oh, let's do the next one with the shaping and, you know, A-line or non-A-line or whatever. So it's been fun. And I mean, I've only been working on this. I don't think I've been working on it a week and look at how far I got. <laughs> so this is COVID knitting at its best. <laughs> So anyway, um, so yeah, so that's that and my, and my modern wrapper is really all I've been working on and, hey. and baking. I'm baking? trying to baking. I'm trying to perfect my New York crumb cake recipe, which I think I figured out, um, cause I want to make the one like, um, yes. oh. I know exactly what you're talking about. When you, when you get it figured out, you, I'm almost you there. tell me. I'm almost there. It's, um, what's his name? Buddy, Buddy. Buddy, um, buddy. Oh, no, not Hoboken no. Bakery. Carlos Bakery. Carlos, yeah, but there's not Top Chef, not, ba what is his name? Ba cake Boss, Cake Boss, Cake Boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, he makes the best crumb cake. So I yeah. went online and I Googled it. You know they don't make it anymore. I know. Well, Rachel Ray, so Rachel Ray had him on and he, sorry, I'm falling into New York accent. And <laughs> he did the cake with them. And one of the things that he did was he used shortening in the crumbs, which I have a personal issue with. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I didn't have any shortening. So I used butter and the crumbs turned out great. It was the cake part that I didn't like because it was a little on the dry side. But I found another recipe that I really like the cake, but I'm not fond of the crumbs. So I think what I'm gonna do is mash the two. I have, I think I'm on my third crumb cake <laughs> batch. All the kids are loving it, which is great. 
And so my next crumb cake batch, I think I will have nailed it. So as soon as I do, I will let you know which recipes to combine. But it, like, oh, we're having so much fun. Oh, I was so disappointed when we were there last time and there was no crumb cake. That you, you were like, oh yeah, we don't have that anymore. Oh my gosh, it was the love best love that crumb cake. Oh, that crumb, the, the cake was so mushy and soft. Yeah. And the crumbs were like big. Oh yeah, anyway. Yeah, it was super good. So that's the other thing that's been keeping me busy. So what do you got? Um, I got my crochet squares out again. And these are squares. These, this is yarn that you gave me, Joan. Do you recognize Ooh! it? Look at how that turned out. Yeah. Wait, go back to the blue one. The blue and the gray, I like that. The way it like stopped halfway. Yeah, isn't that that's fun? Great. Oh, Look at this oh one. How God. fun is that one? Oh my gosh, that's another self striping. And then I'm telling stories with all this yarn. Oh my god. Yeah, it's so oh, fun. So nice. And then this is I started doing the yarn that I bought as stitches. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. That's and that one. Mm -hmm. And did you give me this one too? Yes, I think I did. I think that was a sock, one of the first socks that I tried. To yeah, make. it's so pretty. So um now I still have to do the outline. You know, I have this this outline. It's the the pattern is um, Bear's Rainbow Blanket from Pearl Soho. I started it almost two and a half years ago, and I've got about 130 squares so far. Once I get the the white done around here, so I think I should finish it pretty soon. I think um, how many squares did I figure I wanted? something like 150. So then I have to start blocking them. Did you block that I, one that you just showed with the white around it? No, I haven't blocked any of them. Oh my gosh, it looks blocked. Looks yeah, so I was, and I, the only reason I'm gonna block them, so this yarn is what I made my niece Amy's socks out of. Um, and then, yeah. Um, this is another p piece of the yarn, same yarn, just Pretty. different part of it. But um, the reason why I want to block it is I just want to make sure the squares are five by five. Right. So then they're all square. So I, so I think that our editor is making me a blocking board. We'll see. Um, oh, that's good. Like a little blocking board that's five by five and I can just put a bunch of them down and right. Um, and then I need to start putting it together. I didn't want to start putting it together until I figured out the coloring. And I actually, this, this is entirely full of squares. Oh my so gosh. I, yeah. So I need to lay them out one day. Like maybe tomorrow I'll do it because we don't really have Easter plans. Now when um, you say blocking board, is he going to have like pins so that you can- Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So it's a board yeah. that I can just in five by five, I don't know, he'll have to figure it out, but- yeah. Um, and then I need to lay it out so that I can get the coloring and I can start putting it together. So that'll be fun. That and maybe fun. I'll finish it before the shelter in place is up. Who knows? Yeah. I haven't worked on it a ton because crochet kind of hurts my hand a little bit. Um, yeah. but, um, and the white around the edges is not fun. It's just a bunch of double and treble crochet. And I, so, I kind of know what that means now because I went on my blueprint, which oh, good for you! It's free until what April sixteenth or something, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I went on and and I watched a couple of videos on how to. Um, I think she started out with double crochet, and I haven't gotten any farther. So I need to like watch some more of those, and then the other thing I want to do is find some videos on brioche. Mm, so, I should do that. I should do that because I've never taken any official crochet classes. I mean, my my aunt Viola taught me when I was a little kid, and so yeah. I don't really know like how to join things. Like I don't really know. Well, this technical. this one series that I started watching, it was a little elementary. Like this is a crochet hook. <laughs> Hmm. this is you can hold your crochet hook like this or like that and I mean I sat there and knitted while I was watching it was like you know it's a good thing I'm not super eager to like start right now because then I would have like kind of been like no I'm done um but that being said she was a really good teacher so I mean I I think that if anybody I knew had no experience with knitting or 
crocheting, she would have been really great to sit down and learn. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, that's good. Any other um, groups? Oh, I forgot to show, I bought a couple things before the COVID thing started. So I've had them for a while. This is a progress keeper, but I'm using it as a stitch marker as my beginning around marker. It's from um, Chevis, from Chevy Rell. Oh, we love Chevy Rell. Yeah, so I don't know. It makes me happy on my, oh. my um, I don't know yes. if you can see it very well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it's a crystal. It's top of the crystal. Yeah. What's that? Is there something, is there like a decoration, like silver or something on it's top? It's just beautifully, it's just Mounted. plain silver, just kind of plain. I would like earrings like that. I was going to yeah. buy another one for an earring and I just haven't done it, but it came packaged like super um, cute with her, kind of her vibe. This is how it was packaged. Nice. And it came really quickly. So that was Aww. super nice. And um, the same day that I ordered that, I ordered another Progress Keeper from the Angora Moose. And I've never ordered her before. Mm -hmm. um, and she took a little longer to send her thing. So she wrote me a little note and said she was sending me two extras because Aww. she took so long, which was super sweet. And look at this super sweet box. Oh my it God, came, so cute. Like with this beautiful box. So I haven't used this one yet. And so I thought that I would um, put one of the ones that she gave extra in with our um, giveaway. Oh, so, good idea. Um, so this is the one that I bought, which is an egg. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's just a little egg. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then she sent this cute little hedgehog. Let me see if I can. Oh, I love the hedgehogs. Isn't oh, that cute? Cute. And then a bee. Wait, it's back. Aww. I dropped it. <laughs> um, a bee. Okay, wait, there's something in front of the bee. No, there's something it's like- It's like a bead. Oh, it, yeah, you can't see the bead because of the bead. Oh, cute! Yeah. So cute. All right, wait, show the hedgehog again because the bead got in the way of the hedgehog. Yeah, she has a bead on them, so um, let's see. The hedgehog, there. Oh, the hedgehog is cute. Isn't it cute? So Aww. I thought I'd put one of those in um, because she was so sweet to send me three when I only bought one. Like that's above and beyond. When are we so, doing our drawing for that, by the way? Uh, we said we were going to do it on the 16th, but we, what's today? Today's the 11th. 11th. We could do it on the 16th. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think that's good. So, and, so for those of you that, that didn't tune into our last one, go comment on our last podcast. And anybody that's commented is in the drawing. And then what we'll do is we'll announce it on our next one. And then you can tell us how best to get in touch with you. And you have to subscribe and comment. Oh, yeah, you have to please subscribe. Yes. Exactly. And this is the yarn um, that you would win and some other goodies. Yes. Including one have, of those progress keepers. I have around here. Hold on. Yes. I can't remember which one it is. It's either the yarn knowledge. bag, Let's see it's a bag, or there's a knitting, knitting knowledge, knitting knowledge, knitting knowledge, <laughs> I can't talk, I didn't make it that strong, okay, so, so it would be that, the yarn, and then the progress keeper, and I thought we had something else, and, and there's a bag, and then there's, there's some little top yeah. pool, and like, it's, it's yeah. like a whole bundle of goodies, so, yeah. so, yeah, and we got the kindest, comment that I just have to mention that nurse that commented that said that she's you know having to pretty much get up every day and go to work and come home and go to bed and get up and do it all over again and she said that the thing that's helping her stay sane is tuning into her knitting podcast and trying to knit a little bit so just wanted to kind of give a shout out um I'm sorry I don't remember your name but you know who you are and to all of our nurses and doctors and ENTs and firefighters and all of our emergency people, thank you for everything you're doing and keeping us safe and healthy and 
you know, trudging through this. So yeah, I mean, all of the essential workers right now, yeah. I have so much respect. You know, and our grocery store people. clerks. Oh my gosh, grocery people and. Thank you, Jesus, for my mail lady and my my right? delivery person. I I put a note in the mailbox saying thank you. So right. everybody put a note into your, your mail person's delivery, you know, your mailbox saying thank you, because I don't think that, you know, we don't get to see them that much to say thank you. So maybe a little note might go a long way to cheering them up. But um Yeah. Yeah. But sending out big hugs. So anyway, what your, um, oh, did you see that? Speaking of hugs, did you see that um, John Krasinski, some good news video this week? I saw the very first one he did. I didn't see the one. Oh, you've got to see episode two. Okay, episode okay. two, like, yeah. made my day. It okay. absolutely, like, I, I've watched it over and over again since then. Episode two, where they, the Hamilton, the Hamilton cast. And <gasps> it, oh, Oh, Amazing. I saw they, uh, wait, was it John Krasinski? Who? Yes. So it's John oh, no. Krasinski. Was it somebody. him? Somebody else did something like that. It was, um, the guy from Not The Tonight Show. What's his name? Seth Meyers, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon did something like that too, I think. Maybe I'm conf confusing him. But I don't anyway. know. You've got to watch Some okay. Good News, episode okay. two. It's John okay. Krasinski, and so it's amazing. So, okay. I mean, it's totally gone viral, and so that, yeah. It's, I will watch that. And the other thing is, is definitely Jimmy Fallon, he's he's videotaping with his kids from his yeah. house. Yeah, God bless him. Out. So, yeah. I will watch John Krasinski for sure. Episode two on YouTube. Yes. Um, okay. And then let's see, what else? What are you dream knitting? Any dream knitting? What are your, what's your next project going to be? So I was inspired because one of our people that said that they, um, I think somebody that responded to our blog, I mean our YouTube video, um, said that she's doing, she did or is doing Branches and Buds by Carrie Bostic Hogue. Oh yeah. Um, and I've always, I've had that in my, my faves for a while. So I really want to do that. I think it would be fun to kind of do easier color work where you're just working with two colors. Cause I really like that one. Um, I think I'm going to do the Felix cardigan out of the ginger twist. Um, yarn that my sister got me from, Car from oh, Scotland. Yeah, cool. Cause okay. So here's my issue. <laughs> I always have issues. The Flaum um, cardigan that I've been looking at forever, I'm a little frustrated with because it says to do a swatch or that your gauge is 19 stitches for four inches in ribbing. How the flip do you count that? I mean, like, do you count just the knit stitches because you can't see the purl stitches. Do you count the knit and the purl stitches? Because there is no way, I cannot tell you how many different needles I have tried to do this on. And I finally was like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm walking away from it. I'm sure that there's a secret, but it it's just not happening for me right now. So I'm taking my motherly advice that I gave my daughter the other day when she was trying to construct something like a little model and I went walk away. <laughs> so I'm walking away right now. Um, but anyway, cause I, I thought I was going to use the ginger twist for phlegm and I'm just not getting gauge. So I'm going to do Felix. Um, and then the other one is the other uniform card again, which I think I want to do out of that loop fiber. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. how can Still, you, I mean, just taking a, a a breath a minute, can you believe that we even got to do stitches? And doesn't that seem like a whole lifetime ago? Stitches and uh, we went to Disney right after. I mean. I know, and I went to LA. Like, that yeah. seems like a life ago. I, I, how lucky are we that we got to do yeah. Stitches West? I mean, that was the end of February. And I, I know people knew about COVID-19 and mm -hmm. coronavirus, but it was not a thing in our mm -hmm. area and yeah it yeah. now looking back I mean I saw somebody posted a picture on Instagram of the Santa Clara Convention Center where Stitches West was held and it was all beds. Peg did from um through the back loop 
podcast. Oh, okay. oh yeah. 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 So yeah, very, very sad. Very, you know, it was interesting because the girls and I, I went out to the commissary and did some grocery shopping and it was the first time um, all the commissaries, all the Navy base or all the bases, you have to have a mask. They will not let you on base. You can't wear your mask on base. You have to remove it for them to be able to see you, but you have to show them that you have a mask. So at the commissary, everybody was in a mask. And I said to the girls, I said, you know, um, we were eating lunch afterwards. And I said, I will not take having groceries on the shelves for granted ever again. Right. Like, how lucky we have we are to be able to walk into a grocery store and i remember complaining about the selection at the commissary because it is quite limited compared to a regular grocery store but what what i'm so grateful for is being able to get like the third to last pound of flour you know or two and a half pound bag of flour i mean i'm just grateful that they have something so this kind of turned into a spontaneous what everybody's grateful for. And Lucy was like, I, I just really miss being able to get in the car whenever I want to. She's like, I'm just grateful for my friends and grateful that when we, this gets back to normal, I can just go, go wherever I want, whenever I want. And then Cecilia said, mom, I think I'm going to kiss the floor in the dance studio because <laughs> I miss dancing on dance studio floor. <laughs> And, and while I'm still on my rant, hang on, still on a rant. So we laid floor for the girls, you're gonna laugh. So the, the studio director, so the girls have been dancing on concrete and the studio director um, said, you know, consider getting, um, and Gary, you'll know what this is, um, shower pan lining. You put it down underneath your shower pan when you're redoing your bathroom and then you do the shower pan and then you do the tile. So we caught shower pan, pan lining and put it, that's Macy dancing, put it in the garage and taped it down. And it's just like Marley. So the girls like, you, you would have thought that, that the COVID thing was lifted. They were so happy. So we're all learning what we're grateful for. We're all really. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, my son's birthday was last week. He was 25. He's in Brooklyn. And so we did a virtual party and we had all kinds of family members in multiple different uh, time zones join in on the virtual party. Aww, that was so fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And Aww. tomorrow we're going to do some sort of virtual game night um, mm -hmm. for Easter. So, you know, hey, we're making the best of it. And, um, yeah, it's, an, it's, it's interesting for sure. The other day we went for a hike, which was nice, you know, and that's not something we could do in the, in the middle of a work day normally. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was nice, beautiful wildflowers out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've worked in the garden a little, I have more time than usual, but not that much more, you know, I'm not, cause I'm still working, but um, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting time for sure. How about you? What dream knitting are you? Oh, dream knitting. Oh, I haven't even told you. So, you know, this is way out of my color comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I wanted to do a scrap. I'm always about like, I got to use up my scraps. So that's how these crochet blankets started. So I got out all these scraps. So there's two sweaters right now that use fingering weight scraps. There's one called simple something I think it's called by Anka Strick and I bought that pattern as soon as it came out because I thought I'm going to make this at some point and then there's one called City Limits by uh, Tannis Fiber Arts Tannis yes. yeah and that was free for I think the whole month of March or the majority of March and I bought that pattern or I got that pattern too so I'm not I sure which one, <laughs> yeah. no sure one to make but the one um the city limits has an i-cord neckline it's kind of a straight up and down shape and you can wear it inside or outside like yeah 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 it's meant to be both of them are meant to be worn reverse stockinette out but you could do it either way and then City Limits has a like a couple of pearl stitches or knit stitches down the side. So, you know, it's, so it's, 
it's kind of like this sweater, not a lot of shaping right. and just kind of straight up and down, I cord neckline. Um, yeah, and then the simple something is more of a raglan, uh, more like this no frills shape, kind of, you know, bigger arms. And so it's also reverse stockinette. Anyway, I don't, and the city limits is meant to be a fade, but the, the other one isn't necessarily. And so anyway, I've compared the patterns and that's been really fun. And I pulled out all these yarns that I'm going to use. So I'm going to do that. So this is um, Plucky Knitter. Do you remember when I bought that wing tips at Stitches West when Plucky was first there? I also bought this twill. Pretty. Color. Pretty. Yeah, so just really basic. What is that? What, what's the yarn? Uh, Bellow. Oh, oh, I love the Bellow. Yeah, and then um, this is the Spring Pig. This is little, um, oh gosh, why is my mind? I just bought it this year. I just bought it at Stitches West. It's um, little skein in the big wool mm -hmm. in the spring pig colorway, and I just mm -hmm. skeined up. So there's this pink, and then there's this I have had in my stash. This is Once Upon a Corgi, and it's like cranberry colorway or frosted cranberries or something. It's a Christmas colorway. But anyway, so I started putting all the pinks, and I have this kid so oh, pretty nectar. like I just started putting them all together and it's all very neutral this is the leftover pajama day um mm -hmm. from my shawl that I'm wearing from sweet sparrow knit so I just started putting them all together thinking I was gonna head toward oh I bought this at stitches a couple of years ago I don't know if I'll use it so like I just have tons in this color category which is kind of funny because it's not my typical color I have I could fade to like this is a sock yarn that I have it's red this this oh, red so that's gonna take so much attention pinks. yeah yeah well I'm gonna and so how far do I down do I want to do pink do I want to do pink to red or pink and red back and forth because a simple mm -hmm. something is really like you kind of go back and forth whereas the city limits is you kind of fade it although you could do either right. i mean i just have a whole ton of scraps here so it's going to be fun to play with and see i have these minis that oh, i bought pretty. at stitches that would be press. Too. you know to do yeah. like around so, the cups or around the edging i don't know yeah it'll be fun okay. to play with fun. yeah it'll be yeah, it'll be fun. Just feeling like I want to do something that's a little bit more creative. Mm -hmm. But of course, all these things always originate with use up your stash, which this red that I've had in my stash forever. Now I'm not even sure I'm going to get to the red, which is funny. Yeah, because you've got a ton of pink. You know. So yeah, and that's what hands. I mean, that's also pretty. Yeah, and it's just funny that uh, my projects always start with use up the stash and then right. I don't end up going in the direction that like this red I, what podcast was I watching oh I was watching the little oh what's her little big knits podcast this morning and she just finished a dotted raise shawl mm -hmm. and I thought oh I could use the red for a dotted raise with some mohair or something I'm I'm just a I don't know, but these are how, this is how I get down the rabbit hole of a project is like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use the stash, like this blue with the stash, but then I have to buy yarn to go with the stash, and then that, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long process, but I'm going to start that, and that's another top-down raglan, so super easy, but creative because of the color play. Right, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Right. Well, so, and then of course, go ahead, and then of course what? Oh, uh, there's always socks. Oh, there's always socks. Mm -hmm. Not for me, though. <laughs> well, you always just mentioned the podcast. I was going to ask you to recommend podcasts for people that are looking for stuff to do. Oh, my gosh. There's so many right now. Well, I always watch a ton of them anyway. Um, Little Big Knits is in Canada, and she's very, very even keel chill. Okay. Like very, yeah, like very soft music kind of podcast. 
And then um, another one, two friends that I think, oh my gosh, we would probably hang out. Codependent Knitters are in <laughs> Canada. Codependent yeah. Knitters, is that really their name? Yeah, that's the name of their podcast, Codependent Knitters. What else have I been watching? Um, gosh, their minds, their minds, my minds gone blank. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think. Cause I just, I kind of reverted to the grocery girls, which are awesome. Yeah, they've been doing a lot more, which is great. They've been doing, yeah, it's been fun to watch them. Um, oh, something I wanted to bring up, which I thought was awesome. So I think it was on this, I casted off a sleeve or something. Yeah, that was it. So I had picked up a knit and put the sleeve like had knit all the way down and then when i was weaving in my ends i noticed i dropped a stitch so you know nightmare city so i went on google and i googled pick up drop stitch and i found this one this video by knit pearl hunter on youtube and she does a step-by-step -step how to weave in a dropped stitch so that you don't have to like rip all the way back because you're gonna end up with this hole. So everybody needs to have this in their toolbox of what to do when, because it was fabulous. I mean, you can't even really tell. So highly recommend it. If you oh, ever that's cool. Thank that God for Google. Thank God for Google. And YouTube, all the YouTube. Yes. I mean, definitely when I first picked up knitting, I learned as a kid, but then when I picked it up again, um, it was pre Ravelry, pre YouTube. I got a book, you know, that was, it was like bamboo needles and, you know, from a book. It was like trying to figure it out now. I just, oh, I want to know how to do something. I look it up. And, oh my gosh, and yeah. I just Google it and then I pull up a YouTube video. What was I looking at the other day? I mean, so many YouTube videos. Very Pink Knits has tons of tutorials, which are really helpful. I, yeah. I remember, I think I must have spent more time in gas driving to and from the knitting store when I'd get stuck. That was back yeah. in the day where I only had one project going at a time. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't have to have a project bag, right? You right. Suck it in whatever. I wrap it up in a towel. So, but um, something else I wanted to share. So this gal started um, a group on Ravelry called Craft Again. So she is now officially out of work until um, summer. I don't know why. I don't think she does live in San Francisco, but for some reason I picture her living in San Francisco um she lives she talks about her husband and she talks about her roommate and her roommate's daughter so she lives in a nice little community of people it sounds like and she said that this was all really adversely affecting her mood and she had been sharing her craft projects with um co-workers that were also out of work and it was making them happy so she started her rivalry group called craft again and it's great people are getting on there and sharing the things that they're doing and it's not a big group yet hopefully it'll get bigger but it's just a nice happy place for people to share what they're working on so check that out um and then we have a new thread that i called isolation knitting so I'm encouraging everybody that is finishing projects, post your projects, we want to see them, um, you know, projects that you've started or that you just picked back up again after years or whatever. We want to see them. <laughs> so, you know, because that always makes people happy. Sorry, I keep hitting the keyboard. Oh, well, that's, that's what I love about the podcast is sharing, sharing people, sharing projects. I love to see people's projects. That's yes. the most fun. So exactly. Okay. okay. So, am I the only one that saves my scraps from, um, like, winding my yarn? I am? Okay. Well, I just, I figure some poor goat or sheep gave up their yarn. 
so what I've decided to do, so I have all my scraps here. <laughs> talk about, talk about stash knitting. <laughs> so I've decided I've saved all my scraps and when I get enough, I'm desperate. When I get enough, I'm going to turn this into a pom-pom. Cool. <laughs> You'll have to knit a hat for the pom-pom to go on the top. Well, I figure I can like hang them from my my cabinets here in my office. Because I'm sure I have enough yarn from all of these scraps from winding yarn that I could have made several pom poms. So that's a good idea. Has any other ideas? But I just thought it would be fun to kind of do something silly. And then this is inspiring me to knit faster so I can start another project so I can wind more yarn. I always want to put them out like for the birds, you know. I know it oh, sounds really goofy. No, you know, like, do that for nests. This is the yeah. time here to do that too. Not yeah. a bad idea. There's another good idea. I like. I don't know how they'll know that they're there, but uh, they somehow to I find my baskets that are outside <laughs> in not a good way. So, but anyway, oh. Okay, wait, I have to share something else that might cheer you up and then we should probably say goodbye. So I told you Tia got a puppy. Right? I don't know. Tia kind adopted of puppy? a puppy. His name is Morty and he's just like, kind of like a chihuahua. I think he's a little bit, what are those little terriers? The little one that was in Frasier. Oh, like Jack Russell. Yes, I think it's part Jack Russell. Look at this. Look at his ears. Oh, oh my God. Isn't He's all ears. Isn't He's he maybe the, like a little French bulldog ear. Isn't he? He's the, all ears. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, that's when his ears are up. His ears aren't normal. Oh, wait. Here's, this is a better one of his ears. I don't know. Oh, my saying. goodness. But when his ears are down, that's, this is what he looks like. Is that the Aww, so cute. <laughs> His name is Morty. He's <laughs> so Morty. <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, oh, sorry. Another happiness. All right. Anything else? Should we let these poor people go? No, but we could probably see the glass now. Can you see oh. it now? Yes. Sheep face. Sheep face. Yes. <laughs> and he's like this. Yeah. I don't know. Have you bought any yarn? Uh, no, but I think, so, um, I was hesitating to file for unemployment because, you know, I don't rely on my, on money, the money that I make at the, at the dance store to pay the mortgage or anything. But my boss had a really, had really good input. She said, file for it and use it to support the small business. Oh, that's like, oh, great. great idea. Brilliant. So I'm going to file for it. And when I get it, I'm going to buy yarn. So, cool. <laughs> you know, it, it was, uh, without me working and stuff, I would, you know, kind of just been watching our pennies and I felt bad that we haven't, you know, kicked in. And I feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad too. I, there are our yarn stores I multiple that I would like to support who are doing such a good job right now but um yeah Gary's not working and is furloughed mm -hmm. editor is furloughed so editor should have plenty of time to get this edited right mm. that's, that's the, yeah we'll see <laughs> famous last word so um <laughs> editor editor's Load and not getting his regular income so yeah I'm happy to still be getting my regular income and I'm very fortunate so but I'm not spending extra money either so yeah it's just it's one of those things like we're we're supporting by doing takeout which mm -hmm. helps my psyche because I you know like oh my gosh what food do we have in the house what am I gonna make uh, you know um and feeding Lucy like there's a big difference between feeding four and five, surprisingly. Um, so we've been kind of supporting, we haven't been buying takeout from the places that we would normally go to. We're going to restaurants 
and getting to okay. them so that we can kind of spread the wealth a little bit. But yeah, so I'm going to file for an appointment and then I know exactly where I'm going to spend my money. I think I'm going to go to Loop, Loop Fiber Arts first. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, and Pearl Soho, I need to give a shout out to them because you know how, um, what's the name of that yarn? Uh, total blank, total, total blank. Um, uh, uh, Jared Flood knits with it a lot. Brooklyn Tweed. That one. Yeah. You know how they're doing the, you know, 10, 20, 30% off? Pearl Soho just discounted it across the board, 30% off. Oh, it, I mean, which nice. is, you know, I love it that the yarn stores are doing free shipping, you know, they're showing the love, they're paying it forward. And Zula, she was doing something like a free skein of yarn. Wow. She was like, if you can't afford to buy anything, I'll send you a skein for free. Free. And so then what she was finding was people were getting a free skein and then buying two more so that they could do the project. And she was like, that's great. You know, mm -hmm. um, Plucky did 10%. I think it's ten percent off their stash yarn. I mean, so everybody's just doing a great job. So, yeah. and if you can't, if you can't do it, you can't do it. You know, because you're a small business or something. Yeah, but I love the fact that the stores and everything are really supporting. So, yeah, we haven't done takeout at all. I mean, not because we haven't. I think just because we've been home, so we've been cooking, which is crazy. So yes. we might. Too take out much. tonight but i only have me <laughs> yeah i mean it's so much easier with just two people you know it's there's just two of us so you know you are essentially are cooking for five adults versus us with just two so it's true although warren's cooking tomorrow he's gonna make some we managed to score some filet from we instacarted this morning and got um got groceries from Costco via Instacart, which was a whole new experience. Um, so, but um, yeah, treat yourself, order out, employ your restaurant. True. It's, it's amazing. True that. To me. So anyway. All right, well, um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Until next time, we yeah. are probably gonna be sheltering in place the next time too. And then we'll draw, we'll draw for the prize and then announce it on the next podcast. So. Right, it's a good idea. Yes, we'll do that. And then do you think you could tear yourself away next week? Do you think we'd have something to talk about? Yeah, I, I probably won't make a lot of progress, but we can always talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Somebody never run out of our faces. faces. Hey. I guess, I guess right. we make a lot of funny faces. Well, I probably do, but. <laughs> I've never watched our podcast back. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I've never watched myself. I so. do sometimes. So just to see what Gary's put in there, especially if people comment. So <laughs> yeah, well, he has lots of time on his hands now, so that might be a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're going to get. <laughs> well, he's got a lot of time on his hands. He's got to get like Lucy to do a trick at the end next time. He's got to videotape the trick. Uh, yeah, she doesn't do tricks. He has to work on that first, and that'll take weeks. So we don't, we don't want to slow it down. <laughs> it already is slow enough. All right. Well, All right cheers. Girl. All right. Cheers. We will. Happy Easter to those who yeah. celebrate. Yes. Happy Easter. All right.